Now that we know how functions work, we can try some if statements inside. Let's go on and delete this one. Let's say we are building a driving simulator and we want to display a message according to the speed the driver is reaching. So we go let current speed equals and we're going to be putting in here the examples. Let's say he's driving 75 kilometers per hour now. Underneath, we'll have to define the speed limits. So here we can, uh, instead of saying let max speed limit equals, because this will be a constant and we don't plan to ever be changing it, we can instead of let, it creates a variable, say const, that creates a constant. And this way, even if I wanna write underneath max speed limit equals 70 and change it if i go on and run i will get an error that this is a constant and we can't change it so this is a nice way when you have something that's not a variable and you don't want it to vary and change over your code to make sure that nobody's gonna be changing this so we'll start using constants okay 60 is too low let's put the maximum speed limit on 80 and we'll create another constant with a minimum speed and let's make this 40. So now we can create a function, we can name it display message. And because we define the variable up there, we can leave the parentheses empty at the moment. We open brackets. So inside we can say if open parentheses and inside we can check if current speed is lower than minimum speed. So if it's lower than 40, we can tell it what to do in this case. We open brackets once again. And in this case, we can console.log, you're too slow, speed up. So if the driver is going below 40, we're going to display this message. And of course, we we'll have to call this function display message. So now we don't get anything because our speed is above 40. But if we turn the current speed on 35 and we save again, boom, you're too slow, speed up. We got our message right here. Let's put the rest of our conditions. So we go in the end of the if and write else if and we put the second condition we open parentheses so in here some of you might think that we have to write if current speed is bigger than minimum speed and current speed is lower than maximum speed limit however this condition we don't really need it because we already defined what's gonna happen if the current speed is lower than 40 it's already up there so we don't have to repeat it at all so we we'll go on and write else if open parenthesis and we we'll go now current speed is lower or equal to the max speed limit so here we'll see what's going on if you run from 40 kilometers per hour until 80 and here we can run console.log keep it up you're doing great and then we can go else for all the other conditions that we didn't even define so here it's all the other conditions that if the driver is running from 81 kilometers per hour and higher and we can console log here slow down are you trying to kill us so let's change the current speed to 55 save we're getting the keep it up you're doing great message and if the driver is running with 100 kilometers per hour we are getting the slow down are you trying to kill us message this works perfect and of course if we want to minimize our code we can take the current speed cut it and put it in here and delete these lines entirely and every time we run the display message we put the current speed value right in here let's try 80 that is exactly on top of the limit and we get keep it up you're doing great So now we'll build something totally different. You remember how we did the alert in lesson one that we had a message popping up here on top of our website. Now we're gonna do something very similar. We'll write let favorite color equals prompt. And inside we're going to ask a question as a string, of course. What is your favorite color? If we run this code right now, one moment, because I wrote here favorite color, that's favorite color. Let's save it. So what we get on our site, is a question instead of the alert that just displays the text the different thing that prompt is doing is that it's giving the user the ability to answer something and whatever he answers it's gonna be the value of this variable so i can say here black but right now nothing will happen because we didn't set the code to do anything about it what i want to do next is create a function that's going to be named color personality and inside it's going to have a variable that it's according to the color and we'll say if color triple equals red. 
So I want you to notice that we have triple equals here and not just equal. This means that we are checking that if the color value is exactly the same as red and we're not setting it. If you set something, if I say X equals X plus one, I just set the value of X to X plus one. But here we are not assigning anything. We want to see that the value of this is exactly the same as what we write here. That's the main difference to triple equals and to simple equal. So if the color is red, the open brackets, we're going to return this phrase right here let's maximize it and then we'll go and say else if color triple equals blue and now we'll return a different phrase according to the color they chose yeah so let me go on and do this for the rest i went on and assigned a couple of more colors our website is going to return when the people write these specific colors and then in the end just as a safety measure i will write just else and for everything else the people wrote if it's not one of the colors we assigned here we're going to give them a return of interesting choice that color is unique exactly as your personality so we make a trick here that if they write something we didn't anticipate we're still going to give some answer to them so all these things that we return we we'll want to display them as an alert. So what we're going to do is say alert. We open parentheses and inside we're going to run this function color personality and we're going to give it a value. It's expecting a value here of color, but we don't know what they wrote. The good thing with the prompt is that we assign here whatever they wrote and we name it favorite color. That's why we made a variable here. So whatever they answer in the prompt, it's going to be the value of favorite color. So if I copy that and I put in here as a value to the color favorite color, whatever they chose is going to run through this function as the value of the color. Let's try to see how it works and if it works, save. So we go in our website. And I write here black. I press OK. You are sophisticated, powerful and in control. Let's see. The black returns exactly that. So we are actually correct. And this thing is working. However, as we mentioned on the previous lesson, JavaScript is case sensitive. And we have here all the values. We have them all lowercase. So if I go on and I write in here black with a capital B and I press OK, it's returning me interesting choice. That color is unique exactly as your personality. So instead of giving me the black phrase, it's returning me the generic one that we put in the end. So of course we can fix that. We'll go here that we have the prompt that returns the color and we add dot to it's this one right here to lowercase. I would just give it open and closing parentheses and that's it. Be careful, check the spelling, write everything exactly as it is here. And the moment we save it, what it's going to do is that whatever we write as an answer inside this prompt, it's going to turn all the letters to lowercase so they can actually transform to exactly equal as we wrote them here. And let's go on and test it. Let me refresh to be sure. So now even if I write black with all capital letters and I press OK, I get back. You are sophisticated, powerful and in control. So this is actually the correct text I'm supposed to get when I type black. So let's sum up one last time what we did and how it worked. We are asking a prompt. What is your favorite color? And it's giving the user the ability to write their answer and press OK. Whatever they wrote, it's turning to lowercase and it's going to be the value of the variable favorite color. So the moment the person writes here a color like red, favorite color becomes red. So immediately we are running the function with a value of red. So the red gets assigned exactly here to the color. So the moment it finds that color triple equals red, it's returning you are energetic, passionate and action oriented. So this returns right here and displays as an alert. Now let's say that we are building a site that's only for adults. Yeah. So I want to ask the people when they enter the site, what is their birthday? So we can figure out if they are above 18 and they have access to the content of the site or if they are under 18 and they actually don't and they should go away. Let's start with a variable. Let birth year classically. We've done that before. I will go. It's equals a prompt and we'll ask what year were you born? And according to their answer, we're going to figure out 
what is their age. We've done this before on first lesson, but we've done it a little bit for super beginners. We can recall how we did it and then we can show how to do it as a bit more expensive. Experienced. So we can have a const here of current year equals to 2024. And then we can say let age equals current year minus birth year. And then we can say if open in parentheses age is lower than 18, we open brackets here. And we're going to give an alert. You are too young, get out of here. <laughs> else, so all the other cases are gonna be that he's 18 or older. We don't have something else to define. And in this case, we can give an alert. Congratulations, you may enter this site. Let's try this thing. Yeah, I, I wrote here prompt, no, no, but it's prompt. No, no, no. I forgot one P. Let's save it again. These things happen. So now we get the question. What year are you born? I can write in the 18th century. I'm a vampire. Congratulations, you may enter this site. Uh, let's refresh again. But if I write 2010, you are too young, get out of here. All right. So this works nicely, but this line right here is a big problem because every New Year's, you will have to, instead of celebrating, come back to your site and change this for 2024 to 2025, save it and update it to the server. And we don't really do these things here. We don't work like that. We want to chill on New Year's. So we'll go on and delete the whole thing. And we're going to build something way more interesting and way more fun and way more proper. So this time we'll start with a const that's going to be the current date. And what we write inside, it's new space date with capital D because this is a tool that's embedded inside JavaScript and we're going to use it to get the date dynamically. So I will go inspect on our page to have the console open. Let's find the console right here. And because we don't really know yet what this is doing, let's console log it. Console.log current date save. And what we get here is that today is Wednesday, February 7th of 2024. And we even get the time and the time zone. So all this information is clumped together. And what we want to do, because we want to do some math automatically with the year and the month and the date, so we're going to isolate them. How we can do that? We'll create another const current year equals current date dot get full year. It's right over here. And we don't forget to put open closing parentheses. Otherwise, it's not going to work exactly as we did right here on the date. So this way we isolate just the year. And if we console log now the current year and we press save, it's going to give us only the year down there. Let's do the same for the month and the day. Const current month equals current date dot get month open and closing parentheses semicolon and const current day this time equals current date dot get day open and closing parentheses semicolon. We can of course console log these two so we can see what's going on because one of them is kind of tricky and I'll show you which one it is right now. If we put the cursor on this line and we press Alt and Shift and down, down, we copy this line another two times and now we can write here console log current month and current day. Save. So the problem is in the months. Right now when I record this video is February but it shows here one instead of two and that's because on JavaScript the months start counting from zero instead of one. So January is not one, it's zero. So we'll go right here and press plus one and we'll go around this little thingy. So now when we save, I get the proper month here. That's actually the second and it's not the first. What we are going to build now, it's a little bit more different than the easy way we did before. And it's a little bit more complicated as well. We are going to ask our visitors, what is the whole birthday? Like we're going to ask the whole thing year, month and day. And if they are under 18, we're going to return a console log that says, I'm sorry, you will gain access in five years and two months and 15 days. And it's going to do all the calculations automatically. So when we supposedly ask them, we're going to be storing their answer in some variables. Let's set them here. Let birth year equals, let's put a number now, 2015. Let birth month equals fifth and let birth day equals 15. We no longer need these console logs here. We saw what they do. So let's set how to calculate the age of the visitor. We're going to write let age equals current year minus 
birth year. Then we're going to set the month difference. Let's write month difference equals current month minus birth month. And last one, let day difference equals current day minus birth day semicolon so now we will start with the easy part if the person is under 18 so we write age larger or equal to 18 we open brackets and we'll console.log you lucky dog you may enter this website semicolon and then we we'll go else and now the complicated stuff begin right here as a starter we are going to calculate the time until the user is of legal age in years so we got let years until legal equals 18 minus age so if the person is 15 right now we will know that he needs another three years to enter the site for the simplicity of the code we are going to assume that every month has 30 days because otherwise we're gonna get crazy and we're gonna write a whole book of javascript right here with the same logic we did for the year we're gonna do for the months but because it's a countdown and the person is not of age now we have february so this current month is gonna be the second and if the birth month is gonna be the fifth we're gonna have an answer as minus three because he's not of age yet so we're gonna take this minus because it's a countdown and turn it into positive so what we're gonna do instead of writing month difference here we're going to write minus month difference because minus three months we're gonna phrase it as you need to wait three more months and we don't want to say you want to wait minus three more months and we're going to do exactly the same for the days let days until legal equals minus this calculation right here day difference so let's say that the person has his birthday on the third day of the month but right now we are on the seventh day of the month we don't do the calculation like that three four five six seven but we have to go back there and from seven count all this until three and we have to subtract one month on our calculation and add 30 days so we go back there and we count like that let's go write this on the code so we we'll go here if on the rare case that day difference is positive larger than zero we open brackets and we say months until legal it's going to be minus one but in javascript the minus one we usually write it minus minus but right now because we are focusing on <laughs> complicated math with dates we're going to focus at one thing at a time and we'll explain minus minus and plus plus on the next lesson so now we subtracted one month from our sum there and we're going to add on days until legal equals 30 minus date difference so all we did here is that we subtracted one month and we added 30 days right under that we'll go on another if statement and this time we will write if month difference is positive larger than zero or if you put two straight lines we say or so it's one of the two conditions that we're going to write here we open a new parenthesis month difference triple equals is zero and at the same time this is double end sign day difference is positive this is some rare condition that it may occur. Let me maximize this. We open brackets right here and we say years until legal minus minus. So we take out one year and what we give months until legal plus equals 12 semicolon. So we take out one year and we give back 12 months. That's actually the same thing. So if you notice, we never console logged anything right here and this is the time to do it so i will go on and we'll console.log i'm sorry you will gain access in space we'll go outside plus years until legal that's going to be a number plus string space year or years comma space we'll go outside the double brackets plus months until legal plus a string double quotes space month or months comma and space outside the brackets plus dates until legal plus string space day or days dot let's put one semicolon here and save this thing and hopefully when we reveal our console we're gonna have a nice answer let's see i'm sorry let me maximize that i'm sorry you will gain access in nine years three months 
and 12 days this works perfectly and of course you can go on and play with these numbers around and check the different results so i know this is the most complicated exercise we did because it involved some weird stuff that happen when you do mathematics combined with months and years and dates similar difficulties you will face if you try to do math with hours because every minute has 60 seconds and every day has 24 hours which is a unique system with arithmetics and mathematics so once again if this part was very challenging to you don't worry about it because chances are you are not really gonna mess with these things in uh, everyday life and most of the time you can find some ready code and you will just have to copy paste it and only adjust a couple of things of what you needed to do so the most important thing actually i wanted you to see from this exercise is that we can use all these things and we can get the date automatically and dynamically so you would never have to change anything manually according to dates because we can summon them and call them automatically and they are dynamic and they adjust according to the day that you have now and the hour and the minute and just because we had to practice some if statements and else st statements we tried this exercise because with every exercise we practice something old like if and else but we also introduce something new that was the today's lesson please write me in the comments below if you enjoyed this lesson or if you didn't enjoy it and you found it too much and on the next lesson we're gonna have a lot of fun with loops and loops are a very exciting subject they're gonna save you a ton of writing so please make sure you subscribe and you hit the notification bell so you don't miss the next week's episode see you guys